Hello everyone. Nice to meet you. My name is Kazunari Tada, and I'm an engineer working at the company Konica Minolta in Japan. My name is Yasushi Mizumachi. I'm a co-worker of him. So we both will make a presentation today in turn. So we'd like to talk about anti-reflection coating with both superhydrophilicity and photocatalysis effect. Recent years, sensing and driver assistance camera for automobiles and the security camera in the city are rapidly increasing. So hydrophilic and self-cleaning property has, have attracted enormous attention to ensure a clear view. However, the integration of these favorable functions without compromising other property has been a great challenge for optical thin film design since it has been restricted in two dimensions. In this talk, superhydrophilic SiO2 and a 2O layer on the surface and underlying photocatalytic TiO2 layer are connected via nanostructured through hole by reactive dry etching technique. By this three-dimensional configuration, we could achieve three functions all together on air coating. This is a confirmation of photocatalysis by methylene blue ink and uh, UV light. And uh, this is a comparison between normal air coating and superhydrophilic air coating in this study. Let me introduce a little bit about the technical background of this topic. TiO2 is a well-known photocatalytic material with hydrophilic property when it is exposed to UV light. However, TiO2 increases reflection when we use it as a top layer of air coating because of its high diffractive index of 2.4. Another disadvantage of TiO2 is that it requires UV light to exhibit a photocatalytic property. But the chance to get UV light is very low at night or on a rainy day. On the other hand, SiO2 is a well-known hydrophilic material with a low refractive index of 1.5, which is suitable as a top layer of air coating. However, SiO2 doesn't exhibit photocatalytic effect. So there has been confliction for a long time due to the constraint of two-dimensional configuration. Our goal here is to integrate three favorable, fa favorable functions, which are air property, photocatalysis, and hydrophilicity. To begin with, we are gonna talk about our previous study to see if photocatalysis can pass through a SiO2 layer or not. Left picture is a dense SiO2 deposited on an TiO2 layer. In this configuration, we couldn't confirm photocatalysis effect because there is no path for excitons to pass through a SiO2 layer to the surface. And Right picture is a porous SiO2 deposited on an TiO2 layer. In this configuration, we did confirm photocatalysis and ink disappeared under UV light. However, after 12 hours of environmental test of 85 degree and 85% of humidity, Photocatalysis disappeared, maybe due to some cracks between gaps. Also, another shortcoming was that porous SiO2 was too fragile against the salt water test. So we found that it was very difficult to control the structure just by changing the deposition condition of SiO2. We needed another technique to combine. So we, we asked the nano fabrication platform at the University of Tokyo to use the facility. As a feasibility study, what we needed to know is that what kind of size and pitch of the through hole can transfer the photocatalysis 
through to the surface. To do that, electron beam lithography is a good candidate because it can control the size and pitch precisely. We use a process flow like this. First, spin coating of resist and EV exposure development and reactive dry etching of SiO2 layer to make a through hole. We tested these two patterns to investigate the requirement of the through hole. It's trench with a width of 1 micron and a hole with a diameter of 400 nanometer. Fortunately, both patterns show a clear photocatalysis effect even after 85 degree and 85% of humidity, which means that the pitch of 20 micron is the still in a diffusion range of photocatalysis effect. And the 400 nanometer hole is big enough to prevent clogs in the environmental test. So based on this feasibility study, we saw that this idea was plausible. Next thing we did is to investigate the hydrophilic property of SiO2 after some environmental test. Then it turned out that contact angle of SiO2 was degraded from 2 degrees to 52 degrees, which will be a problem for our customers. So we tried different deposition methods and materials, and in the process, we realized that the glass substrate we use was actually showing a better hydrophilic property in humid environment. This is a chemical composition of the substrate. So we tried each of these alkaline elements such as sodium, potassium, and calcium using a sputtering machine with SiO2 target. And the improvement of the hydrophilicity was only confirmed when sodium was added. So we assume that the sodium was a key component of the improvement. Then we tried to deposit SiO2 Na2O layer by electron beam evaporation method. Since Na2O has a lower melting point than SiO2, it evaporates faster. So SiO2 Na2O layer of 89 nanometer was deposited in three divided times to di distribute sodium element as evenly as possible. As you can see in this picture, we prepared SiO2 Na2O materials in three crucibles on the carousel and continuously deposited onto the TiO2 layer. This table shows three sodium peaks in SiO2 layer resulted from this three divided deposition. This table shows the degradation of contact angle after 100 hours of, of the environmental test for different concentration of sodi sodium element. While contact angle for pure SiO2 was degraded from 2 degrees to 60 degrees. A contact angle for 5% of SiO2 and Na2O barely changed from 2 degrees to 5 degrees. On the other hand, 10% of SiO2 and Na2O show the same good hydrophilicity. However, it increased a haze value up to 1.6%. So we chose 5% of SiO2 and Na2O as an appropriate composition of a source material. As a result, we could improve the hydrophilic property of the coating even after the environmental test like this. Now we can show you some demonstrations of hydrophilicity between pure SiO2 and SiO2 and Na2O after 100 hours of the environmental test. So this is a pure SiO2 layer. As you can see the video, the layer is no longer hydrophilic after 100 hours of the environmental test. 
then the image is not clear, being distorted by the water droplet. And this one is SiO2 and H2O layer after the same environmental test. You can see the water cannot form a droplet on the surface. Instead, it creates a thin water layer which provides a clear view in the lane. Next, what we needed was to improve the mask formation process. Since lithography is optimized for planar surface, it is difficult to apply on the curved surface on the lens and periodic patterns from lithography generate diffraction of light which causes a lens flare and ghost and it resulting on desired artifact in the image and of course it is cost effective it can be simplified the process without using lithography to do that we utilize the morphology of the depositum Silver is a well-known material that is easy to migrate and agglomerate together with temperature. We intensively investigated a morphology of the deposition with different conditions. Then the structure was changed mainly into three types. From left to right, particle structure, network structure, polar structure respectively. It depended mostly on the temperature of substrate and thickness of AZ. Since we needed enough gap for photocatalysis to pass through and enough thickness of AZ to function as a mask, we choose a network structure for further investigations. When we took a further look at this network structure, it found it that Gap and grain size could be meticulously controlled by adjusting the temperature and thickness of AZ. As you can see on the far left, when the temperature is low at 144 degrees, the gap is small, therefore the photocatalysis was weak. On the contrary, when the temperature is high at 300 degrees, the gap is large, but grain size is also large, which later found it to cause large light scattering after etching process. For those reasons, the temperature of substrate adjusted from 150 to 170 degrees to get an appropriate gap and grain size to have abundant photocatalysis and less light scattering. Consequently, we could successfully fix the process flow like this. We could replace the lithography process with self-assembled as in a mask, which can apply even on a curved surface on the lens. We also analyze the size and gap of these structures. Since SEM is easier to measure than AFM, we analyze gap and grain size based on SEM images by using image processing software named ImageJ. We will show a quick introduction of the measurement. As for the gap and grain size, first we reduce noises on the image by applying appropriate bandwidth filter. And then threshold the gray scale to binarize the image into black and white. And plot an arbitrary line to analyze gap and grain size. And for the area ratio of gap, we just plot histogram of binary image and took the ratio of black and white. This table shows that result of the analysis. As you can see, gap size of 25 to 50 nanometer was appropriate for photocatalysis. 
and grain size of about 140 nanometer was suitable for less scattering light. Next, we'd like to explain about the dry etching process. We chose CHF3 gas as a reactive gas because of a good selectivity of 7 against silver mask. When we tried other gases like CF4 or SF6, silver mask was quickly disappeared and it didn't work as a mask. After we chose a gas, we optimized the duration of etching. Observation of photocatalysis was a good indicator to understand the etching depth. We prepared four different samples with different thicknesses of SiO2, then etched at once with a duration of 60 seconds. Here, from left to right, the thickness of SiO2 is 20, 40, 60, and 80 nanometer, respectively. As you can see the picture, ink is disappeared on three samples on the left. This means that the etching goes through the SiO2 layer and reach to the surface of the TiO2 layer. So this way, we could easily confirm the edge to depth. So in this case, 90 nanometer is appropriate to edge the SiO2 of 89 nanometer. And just confirmation, we also measured AFM data to verify the thickness of the depth. It showed 85 nanometer, which approximately the same thickness of the SiO2 layer. You can see the result on the SEM image. We could successfully create the network structure of SiO2 on the surface. And we show you the photocatalysis effect using double speed video. Here, left is a nanostructured air coating, and right is a normal air coating. As you can see, methylene blue ink is quickly disappeared on the left. Here, we show you an improvement of air property. In previous study, we used porous SiO2 to pass photocatalysis to the surface. In this structure, the gap was so small that photocatalysis was very weak. That's why we needed to use the thick TiO2 layer to increase the photocatalysis effect. However, this thick TiO2 layer made it difficult to suppress reflection. This is a simulated reflectivity. As you can see, possible manufacturing, manufacturing errors increases reflection over the specification. On the other hand, new device had wider gap and photocatalysis was abundant, so we didn't need thick TiO2 layer. This improves the air property like this significantly. It shows the stable air property even if we consider certain manufacturing errors. To summarize, we could successfully develop the air coating with super hydrophilicity and the photocatalysis effect. It is applicable even to a curved surface of lenses without lithography process. Since it is a random pattern, we don't have undesired diffraction pattern of light. Thank you so much for your attention.